Hi, so I'd really like to thank the organizers for inviting me, giving me the opportunity to speak here. Uh, and uh, as Claire mentioned, I'm an assistant professor of pathology. I also co-direct what's called the Massachusetts Host Microbiome Center. This is a unique resource we have. It was actually funded by the state to do uh, industry partnerships as well as academics. I think I need my clicker. All right, so the next slide here. Um, so I think probably everyone has heard about the microbiome, but let me just emphasize a few key points. This is really a vast collection of different microbes. They're very ecologically diverse. And as shown on this, the uh, figure here, they colonize throughout the human body. They very densely colonize in the gut, but also other areas, including the mouth, <laughs> genital areas, et cetera. And it's well understood that they're important in human health. And when they become disrupted through a process we call dysbiosis, <laughs> This can lead to disease. We know a lot about this in the case of infections, but there's mounting evidence that the microbiome is important in protecting against a variety of other diseases. This includes autoimmune diseases, cancer, and even neurological diseases. So in the last five years or so, there's really been an explosive growth in research and development into clinical applications of microbiome. This includes what are called bacteriotherapies, sometimes called bugs as drugs. So these are living bacteria that are put into a patient to affect a therapeutic end. We also have what are called prebiotics. So these are dietary compounds that are used to intentionally reshape the microbiome. And then finally, increasing interest in diagnostics. So this would be looking at the state of the microbiome to make some prediction about what will happen to the patient or diagnose a disease. So I have some numbers up here about the market size. These are already quite outdated. Um, this has been well north of a billion invested in startup companies. A lot of them actually in the Boston area. We have a really great hub here. Um, and this is projected to grow very conservatively into the low billions, but a lot of people think this will be a much larger market. <clears throat> So there's really a need in this area for advanced computational tools. <clears throat> and the, the reason I would uh, sort of describe that and highlight to you is that this is fundamentally different than traditional drug development, where we're looking at a small molecule. Here we're looking at organisms that grow. They have to come in and interact with a pre-existing microbiome. That microbiome is also very dynamic. It changes throughout life and also simple things such as day-to-day -day what you eat. The types of data we collect are also different than sort of standard clinical studies. Here we do a lot of next generation sequencing, but this is much more complicated than looking at the human genome. This is so-called metagenomics, where we're looking at the gene content of all these microbes, and many of them, we don't even know what the genomes are. People are also increasingly looking at other modalities to get a handle on the function of the microbiome, things like wide, uh, high throughput mass spec techniques, et cetera. So all that to say the data is very high dimensional and noisy. <clears throat> There's a lot of complex dependencies too, things like the ecological relationships, <clears throat> evolutionary relationships among these microbes. So I often like to call this emerging field pharmacology meets ecology. And there's a real opportunity here to use advanced computational tools to rationally design these therapeutics and diagnostics and really predict what will happen when they go into a patient. Um, so my lab focuses on developing novel computational techniques. I'm a pathologist, but also have a PhD in statistical machine learning from MIT. And so we really go after problems that are hard computation that were the need for these novel techniques. And the microbiome is certainly a great case for that. <laughs> So I'm gonna talk about one of the methods we've developed. This is something called the Microbial Dynamical Systems Inference Engine, which is a real mouthful, so we call it M-Design for short. And the term design in there is not accidental. We really view this as a first step towards rationally designing these therapeutics. So it's a Bayesian machine learning method. I'll talk a little bit about why that's practically important. But what it does, as you can see in the top panel, is it takes in data about the population changes of the microbiome over time, and also information about perturbations to the microbiome. It's not so helpful just to look at things in the static case, but we really need to perturb the system to understand what's going on. So that goes into the inference part where we learn a mathematical model. And the important thing with this model is we can use it to make predictions. And I'll show on the next slide sort of practically how we can use that to design these therapeutics. 
So a little bit about the status of our technologies and what differentiates them. As I mentioned, we focus very much on the dynamics of the microbiome. This gives us a lot more information than static data. Here we know one thing precedes another, so we can start to get a handle on causality in the system. Also importantly, we can do this forecasting. So what's shown in this figure is using the method to basically construct a therapeutic for Clostridium difficile infection. So this is looking at taking all these possible combinations of organisms, predicting which will be stable when we put it into a patient and will be most efficacious in clearing the pathogen. Another differentiator that I mentioned is these are Bayesian methods. This has a real advantage of being able to predict uncertainty in our forecasts. And with this level of noise and other things in the data can give us a much better handle on how much we believe these predictions. Also, we can incorporate biological knowledge that gives us a lot more power to make these discoveries. So it's a data-driven uh, approach, but also augmented by biological knowledge. So as I mentioned, we've already leveraged these tools to develop IP, both therapeutics and diagnostics. We have a, a patent application for a food allergy treatment and have formed a company that is working on licensing that. And then we also developed a C. difficile therapeutic as well as diagnostic and have a provisional uh, patent for that. So as far as the uh, progress and technology sort of milestones, the M-Design algorithm I showed you was published about a year and a half ago, but we've been continuing to extend that. So we had a recent um, oral presentation at the NIPS, the Premier Machine Learning Conference, on methods to really scale this up to massive data sets. Um, we also uh, have a recent paper on something called MITRE, which is a very interesting method. I don't have much uh, time to, to talk about it, but the idea in a nutshell is it takes time series information, so how the microbiome is changing over time, and predicts patient outcome with it. And interestingly, it creates human interpretable rules, so something a clinician could actually look at and understand, saying, you know, for instance, this microbe going up by this amount and this other one going down by this amount, amount I predict the patient's going to have. In this case, we're using it for recurrence of C. difficile. So that's what went into our uh, C. diff patent. <clears throat> so uh, I'll say a few things about next steps for commercialization. So as shown on uh, my left, is what we're really already doing is using this internally to generate new IP. And the business model is to license this to companies, biotech or pharma. And just to talk a little bit about that process for generating new IP, so as I mentioned, I co-direct the Mass Host Microbiome Center. We have a lot of capacity to create microbiome-specific disease animal models. So we use that a lot in initially developing the candidates for these therapeutics. We also do leverage certainly human studies, collaborators both at the Brigham, Children's Hospital, et cetera, to come up with which microbes seem to be important to disease. So we have these candidates, we use the computational models to come up with what we think is the best target therapeutic. We then can go back into disease models for animals as well as in vitro models that are more mechanistic to optimize the, the therapeutic we've come up with. So that's ongoing, but on the right is something I'm certainly interested in developing, and this would be something if there are people in the audience interested in partnering, investing, et cetera, and that's developing this more as a platform tool. The idea would be to have software that could be used uh, by a biotech or pharma company that we would co-develop uh, products with them. We've already had some discussions with a few. Areas that need to be done there are tech, continuing technology development. I've told you about uh, some of the milestones we've already met, but there's certainly more to do, such as scaling the methods, incorporating new types uh, of data, and then also a lot of software engineering, so to harden these tools, to make them more user-friendly, and to have them deployable um, on cloud and, and a variety of platforms. Um, so thank you for your time. Um, as mentioned, I will be out uh, right outside the door, happy to talk to anyone who would be interested in learning about the technologies, partnering, et cetera.